More serious questions tonight about Arizona's foster care system and new allegations that it's failing to protect children. Yeah, the ABC 15 investigators have learned a 15 year old boy recently died while in DCS custody. This is now the second child with type 1 diabetes to die in the state's care. ABC 15 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski has done multiple reports exposing concerns about the Department of Child Safety. Tonight, she has the new calls for accountability. Once a week, Bobby and DeForest Williams come to this spot. And, uh, Christian's grave site. This section of grass. Just so he knows that I'm here. It's their way of connecting with their son. How are you doing? Um, taking it day by day. Yeah. It's been a hard week. Sorry, medical location of your emergency. Without a youth um, uh, that's refusing insulin or refusing medical help, won't go anywhere. Um, now he's making way noises on the floor. This 911 call happened two months ago. A call for help that still haunts the Williams family. Okay, is he confused? Yeah, no, it's, uh, he's not confused. He just ran to the bathroom. They could have called sooner. They fell us. A call that was ultimately too late to save 15-year-old Christian Williams' life. He's like, like making a scene now. He's acting like he's like dead on the floor. A type 1 diabetic. Christian was found unconscious inside this Mesa group home. They assumed because he has behavioral issues that he was faking. And he was seeking attention. But records show they were wrong. Oh, Body camera video obtained by the ABC 15 investigators takes us inside the Mesa police and fire response. Dispatch 20 is a group home. The videos bring into question whether group home staff were properly trained to manage Christian's diabetes. So now he's pretending that he's dead on the floor. He's pretending what? He's dead on the floor. Okay. He's fine. He's holding his breath. Okay. But once officers and paramedics get inside, the situation quickly escalates. These videos may be hard to watch, but it's important you see what happened. This Mesa police report documented the critical emergency. According to the report, Christian's lips appeared blue and his eyes were barely open. Paramedics began conducting chest compressions after it was discovered he was not breathing. It was very hard for me to watch those videos and to read what happened. Christian died at the hospital a few days later. His cause of death, diabetic ketoacidosis, a preventable condition caused by not having enough insulin. This is the last photo Bobby has with her son. I lost my baby, he was my firstborn. I'll never get him back. This is all I have, memories. Christian lived with his parents his whole life, except the last seven months. As Christian got older, he started struggling with mental health, and his family turned to the Arizona Department of Child Safety for help. And we were told that they had more uh, resources than what we were able to do ourselves. He, we trusted the Department of Child Safety. He was in their care. And I beat myself up every day making that decision. And this document only amplifies the family's anger and frustration. It's the incident report from Catalyst Community Corporation, the group home where Christian was living. The report says weeks before Christian's death, managers held an emergency child and family team meeting with DCS, where they said Christian was in need of a higher level of care due to his medical concerns and mental health. But while the team was in agreement, there was no progress on making these changes. What would you want to say to the Department of Child Safety? How could you? And here's another telling piece of information. It was the second time in two weeks. Records show Christian needed emergency help for his diabetes while at this group home. I said, what's it going to take for my son to die? And then two weeks later, we get that call. And this isn't the first time a child with type 1 diabetes has died in the state's care. An emotional grandmother demanding accountability after the death of her diabetic grandson. As we've previously reported, 
Back in December of 2022, Nine-year-old Jacob Blodgett died just 18 days after being placed in DCS custody. Jacob didn't deserve this. Jacob, a type 1 diabetic, was also allowed to refuse his life-saving medication at another group home contracted by the state. Why didn't you learn the first time? Why didn't you change then? It's the Arizona Department of Child Safety's job to protect the state's most vulnerable children, and DCS pays group homes to take care of kids like Christian. This is the Department of Child Safety, and they've lost sight of the children and the concept of safety. Attorney Robert Pastor has filed a lawsuit against DCS and the group home in Jacob's case, and now represents the Williams family. It's utter disgust, like you did this again. What is wrong with you? And under the state's contract with Catalyst Community Corporation, the rules say the group home must ensure that each child in care receives all prescribed medication at the prescribed time and in the prescribed dose. Pastor says DCS is also responsible for assessing a child's medical needs and making sure the home where they are placed can manage their condition. Instead, they sat there and said, oh, he's faking it. And they were dead wrong. Unfortunately, that meant Christian died. For more than a year, the ABC 15 investigators have asked DCS what changes have been made to prevent another tragedy, but DCS has refused to answer that question. Here are two kids who are dead. Do we need a third? He was a caring, loving child. The Williams family is telling their story in hopes that no other family will have to go through their pain. It's not fair for a mother to go to a graveside and eat her lunch with their son. <laughs> the family's attorney just served the state and DCS with a notice of claim on Friday. This is the precursor to a lawsuit. We wanted to take our questions directly to DCS, but the agency declined our request for an on-camera interview. But DCS did say in a statement in part. In response to this tragedy, the department is currently investigating this incident, as well as reviewing licensing rules to determine if anything different can be done to better understand and care for youth facing extreme health challenges. We've been told the findings of this investigation will be made public. Finally, we called and sent multiple emails to the group home, but have not received a response by our deadline. We will continue asking questions and our reporting will continue. I'm investigator Jennifer Kowalewski, ABC 15, Arizona. ABC 15 has made the governor's office aware of this tragedy. Governor Hobbs would not speak with us on camera or over the phone, but a spokesperson gave a statement saying Hobbs is committed to protecting the health and wellness of every Arizonan, especially vulnerable children like Christian and every child in DCS. But this investigation is just getting started, and ABC 15 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski is not done asking questions. She'll continue working to get answers and hold the state accountable for what happened.